watch word 48 says. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 and verse 6. Let us now call our worship to order as we follow in our bulletin. Please stand. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. We continue with the singing of the hymn 494. In the morning, Lord, we praise your holy name. 494. Mm -hmm. continue with litany for music Sunday as we celebrate music Sunday in the Moravian church the litany can be found in your bulletin oh come let us sing to the Lord let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation let us come into his presence with thanksgiving let us make a joyful noise to him with song of praise Let us give thanks to the Father who has enabled us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, to which indeed we were called in the one body. Above all, may we clothe ourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. You are 
wonderful, you are marvelous, you are good, O oh Lord, to me, you are faithful, you are imparable, you are good, O oh Lord, to me. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for every good gift, on this day especially, we thank you for your creative gift to us, which causes us to enrich our lives and experience through science and art, literature and drama, words and music. For you, O Lord, have made us glad by your word. At the works of your hands, we sing for joy. We thank you especially for your gifts to the Moravian Church, devotion to the Savior, simplicity, our strong sense of community and fellowship, and our long-standing dedication to spreading your gospel. We thank you for our musical heritage, to which we are brought closer to you and to one another. Inspire and bless those who write and compose, those who play and sing, those who lead and teach. As you have helped us through the centuries to sing our that all our gifts may be united in your service. May the, may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. In whose holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. now have a welcome greetings and celebration and notices and that will be given to us by our minister the Reverend David Ames. A blessed good morning to each and every one. A warm welcome is extended to all both here in the sanctuary and online. Any visitors with us this morning? Oh, the Millers are back. Good to have you both back. Well, all three of you back. <laughs> so good to have you all with us this morning as we worship together. And for those who may be sharing with us online for the first time, we say a warm welcome to you and a general welcome to you also. Are there any birthdays being celebrated this week? I'm not seeing any birthdays listed on our list. Okay, no birthdays today. Any anniversaries? No anniversaries either. Okay, so that makes my life a lot easier this morning. A lot shorter. Amen. <laughs> and so we continue with just a few notices I just want to share with you. We continue with Bible study this week on Wednesday evening at 7.30. We are at the fourth chapter of Ephesians. We've been having a wonderful time looking at the Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. And you are invited to join with us online, 7.30. So you don't have to leave home. You can join with us and have a blessed time as we worship God together around his word. Before that, however, on Wednesday, or midweek spiritual nuggets, and that takes place online also. And that's on our YouTube and Facebook pages. 
and that is at 12.30 in the afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, 12.30, our midweek spiritual nuggets. And on Thursday, our Moravian Voice broadcast, you can tune in to Life 97.5 FM, 9.30 a.m., and if you happen to miss it on, on radio, you can catch it online at our, on our conference YouTube channel or, or Instagram page. You want to remind us to continue to pray for those who are sick and shutting, those who may be dealing with injury and illness. Uh, one of our own from our choir, Sister Mona, I'm told she's back at home and doing, doing well. Sister Mavis Chase also too, wasn't feeling 100% in recent times, so we ask that we can do to remember them in prayer also. We can do to pray for our sick and shuttings and those who may be dealing with uh, loss of loved ones in recent times. Moravian Children's Convention, uh, these are for the 12 year olds and under. This takes place on Saturday. Uh, this is a remote online conference this year, and it will include the Trinidad Conference. And so we encourage us to get our youngsters uh, involved as we share in the Children's Convention this year, which will be via Zoom, as we will be partnering with the Trinidad Conference. Of course, next Sunday is Mother's Day, and the men will be taking charge of that service. And I'm told everything is in order. I see a smile from the chair. So ladies, come out and be blessed. The Reverend Rosling Hamlin, she takes her vacation leave as of May the 8th, and she'll be gone for the remainder of that month into Ju onto June the 3rd. So we continue to pray God's blessings upon her, and as she goes away from us to have a period of refreshing and, and re reinvigoration, that God will bless her and she'll come back to us to continue in ministry. Our pantry, over to my right, your left, uh, we just ask that you continue to support it throughout the remainder of this year. We have been quite faithful, but we know sometimes as you know, the holidays and the seasons move away, uh, sometimes those things may fall to the back of your, your mind. We just want to remember that persons are in need every day of the week, not just at Christmas and Easter, but every day of the week. So let's continue to share from God's bounties to us and his blessings to us with those who are less fortunate. Choir practice Thursday evening at 6 p.m. This is for the men? Yeah, oh, every choir, so 6 p.m. And there is a brief meeting for men after service this morning. And I'm assuming this is in relation to the Mother's Day. And so, lady, so gentlemen, make yourself available as we gather right after service this morning. I think these are all the notices. I just want to say thanks to all who came out yesterday in support of the fifth springtime tea party. Uh, a wonderful time was had by all, and attendance was quite, quite robust. And so we continue to, and you hear from our chairperson yesterday, who was also our stand-up comic. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and we had a wonderful time. So continue also to pray for our brothers and sisters at faith as they continue in ministry in their part of the vineyard. And so I invite us all to stand as we continue to worship God in song. Uh, today we are focusing on hymns, mostly hymns Moravian, as we celebrate Music Sunday within the province and in, in most of the unity uh, on this day. As we Moravians, you know, we like to sing. And so we celebrate and worship God this morning, especially in song. And I invite you to stand as we sing hymn number 743 and, seven, and hymn 71. And three, three, four. Seven, three, four. Seven. Oh, what did they say? Sorry, seven, three, four. Oh, I'm getting dyslexic. Seven, three, four. And hymn seven, one. And the worship leaders will take us through these two hymns as we worship God in song. Let's stand together. Through all the Caribbean lands 
When deep in darkness our souls are fighting for Caribbean's brought us light. Missionaries risk their lives to fill a long evicted void. They fought many Christian battles. and Sister Claire, the first song that was written by our very own Andrew Paris here in Barbados, and the second one is written by Glenroy Anthony Ernie Smith out of Jamaica. Amen again to those Amen. Now we come to the offertory. 
Let us say the offertory sentence together, and we can find it on our bulletins. Let us go. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And that is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 34. Our offertory hymn is the Hosanna Anthem, found in our music book, Canticle number 7, page 32. Canticle number 7, page 32. Thank you, Lord, for another blessed day. Thank you for bringing us here to worship you in song today. Thank you for the message we will receive. Thank you for the offering that we have collected. May all those who gave and those who had not to give be blessed. May it be used for a furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Bless us, O Lord, and make us a blessing for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen.
please say it. Now we go to the ministry of the word. And our first lesson is taken from Acts chapter 7, reading from verse 55 to 60. And that will be read for us by Sister Margaret Harris. That will be followed by a choir selection. And then the second lesson, 1 Peter 2, 2 to 10. And that will be read for us by Sister Lena. Acts chapter 7, verses 55 to 60. But he, being full of Holy Ghost, looked upon the steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And the stone Stephen called upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
church shall rise. Victory is ours. We now have the second lesson. 1 Peter 2, verse 2 to 10, read by Sister Lena Edwards. 1 Peter 2, verse 2 to 10. Second Peter 2, isn't it? First Peter. First Peter. Sorry. I don't know why you had it as second. First Peter 2, starting at verse 2. Like newborn babes crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into the spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. song of preparation will be that of 464 following which we will hear what the Lord has laid on our ministers hearts in singing to him 464 we will sing verse 1 verse 2 and verse 3 
Amen. Thomas Kelly wrote these words in his well-known hymn. We sing the praise of him who died, of him who died upon the cross. The sinner's hope, let men deride. For this we count the world but loss. On this Music Sunday, we join in us singing the praises of our risen Lord and Savior, or the blessed Lord Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, the one that was rejected by the world, but chosen by our Heavenly Father. And we, as his chosen, his called out people, we join our voices today as we worship him. Let us pray. Our loving God and Heavenly Father, we indeed give you thanks for all the goodness that you continue, Lord God, to bestow upon us. But above all, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the salvation that is ours because of the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, as the sacrifice for our sins. And because he died, we can live. And because he lives, the victory is ours this day. And so we praise you this day, Lord God. We worship you. We thank you. And as, your, as our cornerstone, we lean upon you, Heavenly Father, and we hear your voice calling us to go and to make new disciples, to, as your chosen people, to go and to be your representatives in this world. May we heed, Lord God, that call upon our lives this day and go forth boldly, knowing that you go with us and that you, Lord God, will prosper the things of our hands. So bless, guide, and direct us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our, all our hearts together find acceptance in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to read for us again from the Peter passage, 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, I'm going to read from verse 4, and I'm going to add the two last verses in that section. So I'm going to read down to verse 12. I'm using the New Living Translation. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the stone that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word. And so they meet the fate that was planned for them. But you, you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were identified, you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to give away, to get, keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors, that even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior, and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Amen. The word of the Lord. We are his chosen. There was a song, We Are His Chosen Generation, not too long ago that many of us used to sing, especially younger members. And as we reflect upon this passage this morning, as God's chosen people, I want you to reflect on these four aspects of what the Apostle Peter wrote in this epistle. We are chosen to show God's goodness. We are chosen to walk in his wonderful light. We are chosen to be his ambassadors. We are chosen to live honorably that he gets the glory. And so as we unpack this brief passage, I want to start first with being chosen to show God's goodness. The verse says, as a result, you can show others the goodness of God. Because you are chosen by him, you have the ability and the responsibility to show God's goodness to the rest of the world. Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount would have said to those listening that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are called, brothers and sisters, to perform those good works. In Galatians, which we studied not too long ago, 
we were told that we are created for good works. In Galatians 6.10, we read these words, Therefore, whenever we, are, we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. We are to do good. That's our responsibility. We are to do good to those within the household of faith, but we are to do good to everyone. In the passages that we would have read in our daily text readings, we were reminded that we are to love our enemies. We are to do good even to those who want to hurt us. That's not an easy thing. But God calls us to this place, and he tells us that he will be with us to help us to do these things that he's called us to do. We are not doing it in our own strength. We are doing it because he has called us to do these things. We are also called to be a blessing to others because he has first blessed us. Let me say that again. We are called to be a blessing to others because he has first blessed us. Amen. Our Reverend Nassel would often say we are blessed to bless. That is our calling. That is our responsibility. If you have, and Jesus would have said it too, if you have two shirts and a brother needs one and you can afford to let him have that, that is your responsibility. It is not saying that Brother Cecil got a little bit more than me, so let Brother Cecil give it. It is my responsibility because I recognize the need of that individual. And God has blessed me with the wherewithal to respond to that need. And in so doing, we are to do good. Jesus would have wrote to, would have said to his disciples, which is, is recorded, that when you did good to the least of these, you did unto me. We are called, brothers and sisters, to do good. We were created for good works. And I want us to recognize this is not an optional thing that we are here discussing this morning. This is not an optional thing that we are looking at within God's word. When Peter would have written these words, he wasn't just making a nice suggestion. As believers, that is to be our characteristic of doing good. And more so, as uh, Paul would have wrote, wrote to the church in Galatia, especially to those in the family of faith. Amen. Reverend Vera last Sunday in her message to the 60th anniversary service reminded us that we are part of God's big family. And as such, we need to learn how to live together. There will be differences. Amen. We will have our challenges with each other at times. Yes. But that should never be what divides us. Amen. We are to work around these things. We are to work through these things so that God gets the glory. Yes. We are to love our enemies. The tough one. The hard one. Yes. Because at times, we even got challenges loving our brothers and sisters. But Jesus calls us even further to love our enemies. He didn't say you got to like what they're doing. That's not what he's calling us about. But we have to love them enough that we would want them also to, to experience the goodness of God. Amen. Come to that saving knowledge that will bring them into the family of God. And hopefully, they will move from being your enemy to being your friend. So, we are to love our enemies. We spoke about the pantry. We are to look out for those less fortunate than, than, than ourselves. The poor, the needy, the disadvantaged. We are to stand in the gap for those who have no voice. When we have a voice. When God has given us the ability and the privilege of a position in this life that we have the ear of someone else who can help the less fortunate, it becomes our responsibility. That is the good work for which we have been created. Remember when, Mord uh, not Mordecai, when Esther's uncle, Mordecai, yes, oh, Haman was the one that was saying yes. <laughs> when Mordecai came to es Esther and he said that God has placed you in, the place, in this place for such a time 
as this. But he also, he also warned her that if you don't do it, God will find somebody else to do it. But we are given the resources that we have, the positions that we have, the voice that we have to do good. So I want for us this morning that as we reflect upon these passages, that as we unpack them, that we remember this is not something that we are just coming here on a Sunday morning to say, oh, we had a good service and go away. This is, a, this is a call to action, a call to do what God has called us to do. We are to walk in his wonderful light. This is a call to holiness. And you know that in Leviticus, we are told to be holy as he is holy. We are called to walk in holiness. John would write in his first epistle, but if we, are, if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And the reverse is also true. If we're not walking in the light, we are away from God and not doing the things that he's called us to do. This walk that God has called us to is a progressive walk, is a continuous walk, it is a walk that takes us from glory to glory, from one level to the next. Because you know, and I know, that we are imperfect. And so when Jesus calls us to be holy, he calls us to strive for. Paul would say, I press towards the price of the high calling. It is ongoing. If they run in a race, stops halfway in the race, he cannot win the race. He has to keep striving. He has to keep going, pressing towards that finish line. He has to continue, in our case, walking in the light, claiming the holiness that God has called us to. This is our call this morning. This is our call as we go into the remainder of our lives, not just this week and this day, that we are to walk in holiness. We have that song, to walk holy, walk holy, Sister, Sister Marshall. And so we are called to walk, to live in a way that honors God, that exemplifies who he is. We are, to be, we are to be seeking every day to be more and more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be ye holy as I am holy. Like the Apostle Paul, uh, this is a reference that I've made quite often in these last few weeks, when he said, be an imitator of me as I am an imitator of Christ. I have said it a number of times. When you consider the depth of that statement, because there are many today who will not grace the hallowed spaces of church sanctuaries, and the only Christ they're seeing is the Christ in you and me. Amen. And so when Paul says that to imitate me is to imitate Christ. That is a very high bar that Paul has just set. This is not the Sunday morning only Christian that Paul is speaking about. This is the moment by moment, every breath you take, believer, that no matter what the situation, you are seeing Christ in me. You are seeing Christ in the Apostle Paul, as he would have spoken those words. And so we are called, brothers and sisters, to walk in holiness, to walk in his wonderful light. When you walk in light, nothing can be hidden. Yeah? You are called to walk in that light. You are called to be transparent, that Christ is being seen in you and through you. This is our call. But we are chosen so as part of our holy walk too, we are to pray, we are to study God's word, we are to do his will. These are some things too that we've been exploring over in our Wednesday evening Bible study. We are called to study. Paul would say to Timothy, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. One translation puts it this way, that you are able to give a good account of what you believe. And that is a challenge for us 
as believers within this world today. Because those who are enemies of the faith are constantly challenging us on what it is that you believe. Amen. And we need to be ready to answer them. You don't need to be a big theologian. You need to know for yourself why it is that you believe what you believe and be able to articulate it. Because they're able to articulate the nonsense that they are, they're, they're pushing forward. Even if it don't make sense, they can articulate it. We need to be able to articulate the message of salvation that we have been blessed with. So that starts with us studying God's word. The sad reality is that many believers have never read the whole Bible. And that's a sad indictment upon us. So I challenge us to make this year, if you've never done it before, that this year be the year that you read God's holy word from cover to cover. Not just as an exercise in reading a, a, a large book, but the Old Testament is the foundation of the New Testament. And the New Testament reveals the Old Testament. So you can't read one without the other. If you're to get the whole story, you have to read all of it. And so that's my challenge to you, to us, because you can never read it too often. So if you've read it before, go check the box and see if you're gonna read it again. Go back and read it. Every time you read God's word, he reveals something new to you. He's an infinite God, we are only finite. So we could never understand all of him. Also, too, we learn more and understand of him as we, too, grow and experience his goodness to us. Because what we may think is the ultimate, when God shows us, when he pulls back that veil, you realize there's so much more. And so, personally, I have a challenge with uh, those tell your evangelists. And there is one popular one who has a book, Live Your Best, Best Life Now. The difficulty there is, is that Jesus has said to me, to us all, that I'm going to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you will be also. We say often at funerals that where the dead in Christ is, there's no more death, no more suffering. They are in his presence. So the challenge is, how can you live your best life now if God has better for you? You cannot live your best life now. Matter of fact, if you are living your best life now, then you've got a problem with eternity. That's the reality. So you need to check yourself. Before you jump on the bandwagon of living your best life now, understand what it is that you are saying. Because if you are a child of God, your best life is still to come. It's still to come. Okay. So let's continue to study his word and as we study his word, remember to pray. Paul would have written to the Ephesians, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. He spoke this in the context of putting on the armor. So as we prepare to walk holy, as we prepare to do the things that God has called us to do, we cover that all with prayer. And allow God to lead us. We seek his guidance and his direction, we ask him to hold our hands and to take us through. And he's promised that he'll be with us. He'll make a way through the wilderness. He'll make a path through the sea. He'll walk with us through the fire. He'll break, bring us through. And that's the other thing. God didn't promise that we wouldn't have challenges in the here and now. But he's promised that he'll be with us during those challenges, and he will take us through. And finally, within the holy walk, within that walking in the light, we are also called to live his word. The psalmist would write in 143 and verse 10, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. We are called to do God's will, not just to know it, Paul would have written, you know, if you go and you look in the mirror and you see God's word, but you walk away and forget about it. 
What help is that? So as we study, as we hear God's word this morning, let us apply it. Let us go forth and live it. Let us go forth and do it. And as part of that doing it is the good work which we spoke about earlier. We are also called to be his ambassador. And as his ambassador, we are his representative. We are to be speaking on God's behalf, representing his interests and doing his bidding. And it's not about us. It's about God. Too often we make it about us. But God is saying to us, just do my will. I'll take care of the rest. If they reject you, they have already rejected me. You are simply only doing what I'm, call, I'm calling you to do. And that's what an ambassador does. An ambassador is not there to represent his own self-interest. He's to represent the interests of the one who sent him. That is why when you get these, diplomat these international diplomatic things, the ambassador is summoned. He's summoned on behalf of his nation. He's not summoned because he himself did anything wrong. He's summoned to take a message back to the one who sent him. Paul, in writing to the church in Corinth, and that is another epistle that we, not, we studied not too long ago, in chapter 5, verses 20 and 21, you read, you read these words. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. We speak for God when we plead, come back to God. This is not a message from David. David has taken the message of the one who sent him, saying, come back to God. We are his chosen generations, brothers and sisters. If you have accepted the gift of salvation, you are chosen. You are chosen before the foundation of the world. You are chosen to do his good will. You are chosen to walk in the light and to perform and do good works. And as his chosen generation, we are also told to walk humbly and, and honorably among those who are looking on. Our walk should be such that they can find no fault. I once heard a speaker say, if being a Christian was a crime, would you be in prison? Food for thought. If it was a crime, is there evidence enough in your life to convict you? We are to walk honorably among those who are looking on. James 3 and verse 13 reads, If you are wise and understand God's way, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. Let us continue, brothers and sisters, to walk honorably. The passage in Peter would, would say that they would see the good works and glorify, that honor God. Jesus would say in the, in the Sermon on the Mount that they will see the good works and glorify God our Father in heaven. This is our call to live the word. We are his chosen generation. Chosen before the foundations of the earth. We are chosen for good works. To be a blessing to others. And for his glory. Let us continue to sing his praises. To proclaim his message and to be his ambassador as we live our lives here on earth, knowing that the best is yet to come, knowing that he has prepared a place for us, and where he is, on that day, we will be also. Let us pray. Our loving God and eternal heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for choosing us, choosing us to be your, your select few. There's nothing in us that is worthy of this. You loved us enough that you gave your son to die for us. Not of works, the apostle Paul wrote. It is a gift of God. It is by grace and grace alone that we, are be that we have been saved. 
And so may we continue to trust in you, Heavenly Father. And as we trust in you, may we go forth to live lives that are representative of the trust that we have placed in you. That we would speak boldly your truth. Even in a hostile world, we will stand for you. Knowing, Lord God, that you have our backs, that you are there. Matter of fact, you have promised to go to before us and to make the path. So may we continue, Lord God, to trust you, knowing that we have been chosen by you for this work. So bless us, guide us, direct us now, even as we prepare to come around your table and to remember all that you have done. You, Lord Jesus, told your disciples, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. So bless us now and hear us as we pray. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother David, for that word. We are God's chosen people. As we reflect, we stand and sing the hymn 433. Keep us in your service, Lord, ever faithful unto you. Let our work and words resound, all that's pure and good and true. Let our will stay firm and strong against all evil and all wrong. The hymn 433. Master friend, may we serve you to the end. Let's prepare ourselves, brothers and sisters, to join in Holy Communion around the table. Those who may be leaving, we pray that God will go with you and that you will continue to walk honorably before all men, that they may see the good in you and glorify our Father, which, in, which is in heaven. Prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. <laughs> 